you were at the table, and I had, uh, thank God, we have a very nice and forward-coming sucker who came and briefed, and I had a Lithuanian ambassador who I basically dragged out of the NAC meeting to come and inform and summarize the internal debate to the Swedish minister who could not participate. That's a new reality, and that is a reality, and I would not say it's not Sweden not doing its homework. Nobody had, did, had done its homework. Nobody could foresee the situation only three months ago, two months ago. And that is basically the total change of scenario, and that will deeply affect our relationship and our future relationship with the Alliance. But it's easy to see and state, and we're basically in the middle of the crisis. I can now just describe to you the changes, the dramatic changes. We have built up a system of cooperation between not only Sweden, but partner countries, troop contributing partners with the Alliance. And now the Alliance, exactly as Heather was saying earlier on, will not be about operations. I still think, and then I come to my last point, it might still be about partnerships. I will not be as pessimistic, but of course, I'm the demandeur, so I'll have to be hopeful. Um, there, is a, there, will, there is definitely a difference between partnerships and memberships. We know that, and it has to be that way. And I think it's even in our interest. Yeah. Uh, Carl Bildt will, uh, will claim the importance of Article 5. It's actually indirectly, mm -hmm. might not fully agree perhaps with your description of the situation, sir, but. Uh, Article 5 is important also for our own security, for the Nordic, no, North European security. It's a different, we are in a different modus of operandis right now. And it will take time. It will take time for the government. It will take time for parliament. It will take time for the Swedish public to understand that times are changing, that the alliance is, is changing. It is not about global partnerships anymore, crisis management operations, uh, cooperative security. Uh, not in the immediate future. I would still claim those issues have not disappeared. The world will continue spinning, disregarding, disregarding what happens in our close neighborhood. NATO will still need to look even at global challenges, uh, energy security matters at a global level, cyber security threats. You still have the demand of global partners to work more closely with the alliance. I think the US interest will be to have a NATO, which is also looking to the, you know, the prospects that go beyond the Euro-Atlantic uh, environment. So I think that ambition will still be there. I can, of course, now today just see where we stand, Sweden today. And we will have elections. We know that. We will see what happens after those elections. We're now, of course, very closely politically focused on, on our short-term national interest. But the debate will need to sink in, as I said, publicly, politically, in the government structures. Because we've lived in another environment for the past eight, nine, ten years, you don't change and switch security policies overnight. We know that, and it's good we don't. We need time to sort of assess and to, to understand what's happening. But in the present situation where, and I form in, in my official position, membership is not on the table. It's not an issue we're debating, even though I had not got the questions during the past six years. I've get it, I get it much more frequently these past two months, which is also interesting. Nobody ever discussed you know, NATO membership. You know, we had our policy, and we didn't need to. We could work with the alliance as constructive partners. Now, yes, that, com that question comes up. You mentioned the Defense Commission visited you. I think not only, not only Latvia, but they have visited many other partner many allied capitals, and in each capital, they have received the same question. So I think the most European, including not only the US, but mo mo many European capitals have been very clear on the message given to Sweden and also taking the changes in our close neighborhood into account. But as long as we don't have membership on our, no, it's not on my agenda and my per I mean, what I think personally is not relevant. It's not on the official, it's not the Swedish official position. We have a partnership and we still have an interest to further develop that partnership. And therefore, I would still claim, and I would you know, indirectly in this, this um, discussion argue, that it might still be also in the alliance interest, including the Baltic countries' interest, in view of the summit coming up. And we have discussed earlier on the burden-sharing issue. We are where we are. We have the capabilities we have. We have them. Sweden, ha uh, Finland has them as well. I think to have a certain pragmatic approach to what we could do, we have the solidarity clause, yes. I think that should be put up to proof. Where we can be of assistance, and I'm not asking for security guarantees, but where we can be of assistance, and we did not long ago a mission in Iceland, which we referred to, there are certain tasks a partner country can do, and just by showing presence and political, let's say, uh, political solidarity, military contribution, it's an asset, it's a cost at the end of the day. Yes, now the US and other allied countries are reinforcing until the end of the year. 
I would foresee by next year, if the situation does not improve and the military needs are still there, we will be approached and we will be asked to contribute where we can contribute. And of course, as I said, there will be differences between what a partner does and an allied country does. But I think, yes, it will be part. It should be normal for a country, a European, uh, we are in a strong EU member, we're a strong defender of the European security and, for, and, and defense policy, that if a European country is under threat, and we have said so, we should be able to contribute. And if the alliance is the organization that organizes that military support, then even in a partnership situation, we should be able to be supportive. That's not security guarantee, as I said. It's not asking for national support. It's just providing support where support is required. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Veronica. Um, I have one follow-up for you as well. I know I cannot ask you about your next posting, uh, but you have a successor. And my question is, uh, uh, Håkan Malmqvist, uh, w will his uh, mission be different from yours uh, regarding the fact that the word has changed now? It's, as I said, it's still a Swedish. We have a Swedish policy towards NATO. It's built on a partnership policy. NATO has developed the partnership policy, and we have been helping NATO to open it up a little bit more widely. But it's not a Swedish invention to have a partnership policy. As I said, it was built up through many years of crisis management cooperation. It's been very successful. It's been good for Sweden. It's been good for the alliance, I would hope. And now we see, we're looking at how we can further develop that partnership policy until we have a different policy in Stockholm. And uh, Håkan Malmqvist, my successor, will be an excellent ambassador, and he will follow Swedish policy as I have done. Okay, thank you. Before I... I well, are there any bright questions uh, still to, to pose? I think we have a few. Before that, I would li like to be... Uh, um, just say, you, you addressed Veronica, you said you appeared to the Swedish parliament. Uh, it's very nice for a parliamentarian to be able to say in this situation that the best briefings we get in the Foreign Affairs Committee is, uh, is run by, by uh, Veronica and her, her colleagues at our Foreign Office. Uh, these are the best and brightest people that the Swedish taxpayers uh, support. Uh, uh, at least I can say that after, after um, eight years in, in the parliament. And, uh, so if the wrong decisions are made, in the parliament, <laughs> and if the wrong decisions... It wasn't the briefing. <laughs> la ...later will be made by the Swedish people in a referendum uh, on, on NATO membership, nobody should blame our, our um, best ambassadors, not including some of the older guys. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, well, well. <laughs> so, uh, we have a few final questions. Ambassador um, Bayarunas, once more. <laughs> Thank you already, but... You know, those who listen to me over the, my already more than two years here, I'm really a hardliner in, in a way that when I see Nordic countries cooperation with NATO or Nordic country security, it really puzzles me. You know, we Nordic Baltics are already a club. Is in respect of the, whether Finland and Sweden will, defend, will decide or not decide to join NATO, we're the club. Look to our financial systems. They're already integrated. By ne next year, when Lithuania and Sweden will finalize cable, we will have joint energy market. Our, our economies are nearly integrated politically. So I, I mean, still believe this is uh, old-fashioned to talk about Nordic countries, defense and security. We are already here, Nordic and Baltics together, again, with or without Sweden joining NATO. So that's why uh, sort of trying to be uh, from the hard line to become uh, asking questions. So I would ask you, I mean, some of them, to reflect how you see this uh, in a new reality that the Baltic countries are here. Of course, we have um, uh, very much now in different situation with, with this crisis uh, evolving, and we have now, of course, asked Americans to place uh, troops in our in our soil. But still, there is a life beyond uh, Russian-Ukraine crisis or Russian aggression, and uh, look to the future. How you see this Nordic-Baltic cooperation in security and defense? Thank you. Anybody wants, Pauli, you want to start up? Well, I, once again, I mean, I can say that I have been a very early believer in uh, NB, uh, Nordic-Baltic uh, cooperation. And uh, it is, uh, even, even in sensitive areas like, uh, like military training, military education, even exercises. So, so uh, we have done a lot, e e although we have been in, 
in uh, you know quote unquote in different camps. I mean, uh, you uh, obviously as NATO members, and we we uh, uh, partners to NATO, and, and uh, uh, so uh, anything and everything that we can do more. I mean, it's uh, it's almost is a question of imagination now because we do so much together that uh, it's hard to to uh, figure out uh, areas that we would not uh, be, be engaged. Uh, of course, then, when we talk about... Uh, and, and that is really the, the, the dividing line, and that's what uh, uh, we're talking about today here, uh, basically, is, that, uh, is the, uh, how, how much a different difference it makes to be a member of NATO and a non-member of NATO. And I, like uh, the ambassador was saying, that's, uh, I agree every word, that, uh, uh, at NATO, and I, I spent uh, I spent also three years there as uh, as uh, Finland's uh, uh, defense advisor uh, already ten years ago, or more than ten years ago. But anyways, uh, uh, already then, and and I assume it continues to be the same that uh, that there is a stark difference between between being a member of the club or or, or non-member. Mm -hmm. But I'm wholehearted uh, supporter of. Uh, of um, uh, Nordic Baltic, and not on only Nordic Baltic, but uh, Nordic Baltic Polish. Uh, mm -hmm. Say that's with uh, that way that uh, relationship is very very important. Might I add one more Baltic state, Germany? We yeah. had um, yeah. German boots on the ground during uh, steadfast jazz. Mm -hmm. Our parachuters uh, landed in Gotland. Uh, I had no problem with that. I must say, the last time <laughs> German soldiers landed in Sweden. Uh, Seventy years ago, that that created some problems, uh, but but um, uh, Germany. We shouldn't think about the Baltic s states as only uh, mm. my good friends in in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, but also Poland and and Germany. I don't think that concept is really into an ordinary Swedish mind. That these are also uh, in countries around Mare Nostrum. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Atis, yes, well, could, 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 very short. could we do something more concrete together, Sweden just, and Latvia? Just a reminder, you're right, because remember Radek uh, Sikorsky's speech in Berlin three years ago, mm -hmm. Germany, wake up, grow up, mm. and uh, the relationship between uh, Germany and Poland is just fantastic. It's very good, and this pleases us all. Now, I am in a very difficult situation because of Artis Pabrix. He predicted the future correctly, and this is a load on me now. But I can say that Heather risked predicting the future with the NATO summit, and I suspect you predicted the future right. Right? <laughs> After all, you come from Washington. Uh, I would say this about Nordic-Baltic cooperation, and this goes right through to Poland and, uh, and Germany, that I risk now saying that uh, Finland, maybe even within one year's time, by the time you will have your next conference, will be well into NATO. Well into NATO, if not a member. And then Sweden when will When is your next conference? <laughs> and Sweden will have an enormously difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest to Sweden to think ahead so it doesn't come into a situation when she is the only country in the Nordic Baltic area mm -hmm that is a long way away from NATO. And when you addressed Heather and said that she was from Washington, that was in a positive sense. <laughs> uh, yes, of yes. course. <laughs> okay. Veronica? Uh, very shortly. Short, yeah. uh, very shortly. Yes, I think more could be done, Nordic Baltic, and I think exactly as Max is saying, not only Nordic Baltic, but North European. But that would, and then I'm talking about going in the direction, because that was a work also ongoing in the Alliance before um, before the crisis, uh, a framework nation concept, a concept the German government has put forward. And I think it will still be there somewhere. And it's all about being having a more rational approach to how we use our military instruments. And it goes much in the direction of specialization, more of specialization. Each country doesn't have to have all capabilities uh, mm -hmm. available. Certain countries take over certain tasks. And if they have, you know, let's say Sweden has, as we know, a strong, uh, a sw a strong Swedish um, air force that can take over a certain area and conduct certain tasks. So that kind of work could, of course, be done more, you know, let's say, in, in, a, in, more la more, more in bigger depth if all the countries were part of the alliance. It will be in one way more difficult for us, but I think they're even discussing associating partners to that kind of work. 
right now put on hold because of the more emergent and, and short-term needs and requirements and focusing on the present crisis. But yes, so I think more can, short, long answer to, to short question, more can be done in a different situation. Can I just add one little point? No. Yes. About we, uh, we, we in the Baltic states cannot afford jets, fighter jets. That's mm. clear. We're just too poor for that. The Finnish jets, American jets, you know, in Finland, 63, right, or something like that, and the 73 Gripens in Sweden is an enorm would be an enormous exactly. asset for the exactly. Nordic Baltic area. That exactly. is capabilities of the big yes. sea. Exactly. And w when the Finns buy uh, just Gripen, the new version, they can give you the Hornets. <laughs> yeah. You want the Americans around, didn't you say so? <laughs> no, I, I, I was actually, I mean, our thinking seems to be uh, moving in the same directions because I was actually going to say the same thing that uh, uh, when I started my uh, my brief comments here, I, I started from you know the sort of a small countries perspective and trying to refute the myth. And it is a myth that uh, small countries don't matter in, in NATO. So I used uh, used the uh, uh, the three uh, 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 alone small countries uh, in uh, in the Nordic area as as examples of how, how influential they, they, they have been over these years. But when you look at this whole area, I mean, just uh, I don't have any sort of fact book now along with me, but uh, but uh, uh, if I count it right, uh, there's some like 30, 30 31 million uh, of us uh, Nordics and, and Balts. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and now, okay, 32. And, and then <laughs> we spend, uh, and you probably have a correct uh, figure in your head, but I just um, figure out that we probably have about uh, 14, 15 billion euros uh, worth of, uh, of uh, defense uh, uh, budgets right now. So it's, it's a lot of money and we can do all kinds of things. We have more than 200, uh, uh, 200 uh, uh, you know, first class uh, fighters uh, uh, amongst these countries. And, Finland and Sweden could e could easily join their navies together, you know, specialize in certain areas. Uh, we c we could do all kinds of things if we if we really were were uh, sort of wise uh, enough to do it. Uh, so why don't we do it? And we can start with my uh, Swedish Finnish uh, commission, commission on NATO. Yeah, uh, uh, spe <laughs> special thanks to Pauli for that idea, which I will bring to my 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 fellows in in the parliament and, and government. Uh, Swedish-Finnish Joint Commission. I think we have to wait for first the Swedish Defense Review Board May 15 and then for the Swedish uh, general election September 14. Then we can start this discussion yeah. all over again. And, yes. and we, we have elections in April, so it it's goes on and on and on. Yeah. So, so we have to cut it somewhere. Uh, so uh, We have elections in October. Oh, come on. And we're, doing, <laughs> and we're doing it already now. Thank you for coming. Before, before handing over to Stefan Olsson, who will conclude uh, this uh, uh, discussion, uh, Veronica asked, when will the next uh, conference be? Well, um, I'm afraid to say that I think reality will change so much to the worse that we need another conference next year. Uh, when we planned for this conference, uh, we said, I said, uh, we do it after Sochi, but before the hockey championships in Belarus. Uh, there will be uh, an intermission for, for Putin to act, and he, so he did. So. May, may I say one, one more thing? It's, it's very, very important. Uh, uh, some Finns uh, uh, enjoy it uh, tremendously uh, and uh, enjoy that uh, Putin was in the audience when Finland beat uh, Russia in ice hockey, uh, <laughs> three to one. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.